Hello, I'm Mike Panaki, and in this video, we're going to go through how to get started with the ProfitTap IOTA. The IOTA is a compact, self-contained device that will allow you to get in the path of the packets and capture packets to a one terabyte drive. Once captured, the ProfitSite application on the IOTA allows you to perform analysis on the captured traffic and in many cases, reducing the need to download it and dig into the packets. If you do need to dig into the packets, it's easy to download the filter traffic for analysis with tools such as Wireshark. I'm going to get started by going through the physical characteristics of the IOTA. Then I'll move to connecting it to the network and logging into the device. After that, we'll look at how to start the packet capture and use the dashboards to drill down into the captured traffic. Here we have the ProfitTap IOTA. There are two models available. One has RJ45 interfaces and supports 10, 100, and gigabit. The other has SFP Plus cages and supports 1 gigabit and 10 gigabit interfaces. In both cases, the IOTA supports both span mode, which allows packets to be captured on both interfaces, and inline mode, which bridges the traffic between the two interfaces. The mode you use will depend on whether you're capturing traffic from a span port on a switch or placing the IOTA in line between two devices. When it comes to inline mode, the one gigabit model supports fail to wire. This means that if the IOTA should lose power, relays will close and it will continue to pass traffic between the two RJ45 ports. This feature ensures that the IOTA does not create a failure point in the network. The 10 gigabit model of the IOTA supports both 1 gig and 10 gig fiber and copper SFPs, depending on your network configuration. If we flip it around, we find the management port. This port serves a couple of purposes. First, this is the interface we'll use to connect to the web interface on the IOTA. When this port is connected to the network, it'll obtain an IP address. By webbing into the IP address of the IOTA, we'll get a login page. Second, if this port's connected to a PoE switch, it'll power the IOTA. The IOTA draws about 15 watts of power when using PoE. In addition to supporting PoE as a means to power the IOTA, there's a 12 volt power plug. It's strongly recommended that you only use the power supply that came with the IOTA. This power supply provides 12 volts at one amp to the IOTA. To finish our physical tour of the IOTA, Let's go back to the front and check out the Start, Stop, Reset button. This button makes it very easy to send the IOTA out to a remote location to capture packets. Once connected in line and powered up, the status and capture LEDs will flash. Once they've stopped flashing, the IOTA is ready to capture packets. Pressing the button once will start the capture. You'll notice the capture LED will begin flashing. This indicates it's capturing packets to disk. Pressing it again will stop the capture. Once the capture stopped, the LED will remain steady. Now that we've gone over the connections and buttons on the IOTA, let's connect it up and start capturing some packets. I'll begin by placing the IOTA in line between a computer and the rest of the network before I apply power to the IOTA. I'll connect port A to the switch and port B to the computer. Next, I'll plug the management port into a switch port. In this case, it's a PoE port, so the IOTA will immediately begin to power up. If we look at the LEDs on the front, we'll see they're flashing. This indicates it's booting up. As soon as they're steady, I'll go to my DHCP server and find the IP address of the IOTA. You could scan the network for devices that respond on TCP port 3000, but I found that using the DHCP server is a good way to go. Now that I have the IP address, I'm going to use my web browser to connect to the IOTA. Since the IOTA has a self-signed certificate, I'll get a warning from my web browser. I trust the IOTA, so I'll continue through this page to the login page of the IOTA. The configuration options on the IOTA allow you to import your own certificate, if you like. The default user ID is admin, as is the default password. Once you're logged in, the IOTA will ask you for a new password. This is to ensure you change it 
from the default setting. Now it's time to get the capture started. I'll go to the Capture Interface Configuration screen. Since I have the IOTA placed in line, I'll make sure that the Span Mode box is unchecked. By having this unchecked, it will bridge ports A and B together. If I wanted to capture on these two ports separately, I would check the Span Mode box. Now I'll click Save to save the configuration. Now I'll move over to the Capture Control screen. Before I start the capture, I'll add the IOTA Capture interface. After that, I can start the capture by scrolling down and clicking on the Start Capturing Session. Another option is to press the Start Stop Reset button on the front of the IOTA. In both cases, the IOTA will begin capturing all of the packets seen on ports A and B and writing them to disk. By moving up the screen, we can see the number of bytes written to file and the number of files written. I always like to validate that data is being written to disk before I move on. If it's not, I want to check my connections and ensure the capture LED is flashing. After the data is written to disk, the Prophesite application on the IOTA will begin processing the data flows. Metadata is collected for each of these flows and written to a database. This database is used to create the graphs and tables seen in the various dashboards. For this quick start video, we're going to focus on the home dashboard. I'll get to this dashboard by clicking on the eye in the top left corner of the screen. Now it's going to take a few minutes for the home dashboard to populate after you've started the capture. So if data isn't showing up immediately, don't worry, it will. The top two graphs give us an idea of how much data has gone between ports A and B over a period of time. This time period can be adjusted by clicking on the time frame setting in the upper right corner of the screen. You can use one of the quick ranges to select a time frame or enter one manually. The manual entry is very useful when trying to find traffic for a specific problem. By placing the mouse over the graph, you can click and drag to drill into a time period. Let's say you see a spike of traffic and you want to see the conversations that occurred during that time. Clicking and dragging will narrow the time frame and the conversations will be shown below the graphs. With the time frame selected, I'll hover my mouse over one of the IP addresses shown. A pop-up appears saying Download PCAP. If I click on the IP address, the IOTA will create a filter on that IP address for the time period displayed. It will then extract all of the packets that satisfy the filter and download them to my computer. It does not get any easier than that. If I want to filter on that IP address, I can move my mouse to the right and I'll see a couple of magnifying glasses. The one on the left will filter on the IP address. The one on the right will exclude that IP address. This is useful when I'm not ready to download the trace and I want to keep drilling into the data. Another way to quickly search for IP addresses and names is to use the custom search field. I can type in a partial host or DNS name or an IP address. The IOTA will search all the flows for that time period and show only those devices that match that criteria. This is a great way to find all the servers that a specific host is communicating with during that time period. For instance, I could put Facebook in this field and hit enter. It will show all of the Facebook traffic between the PC I'm monitoring and the internet for the time period I've selected. This is a great way to quickly find the traffic you're looking for. Another way to filter down on flows is to use the filter expression builder. Clicking on the plus symbol will display a list of available filter fields. In this example, I'm going to select IP Dest. As I start entering the IP address, a list of addresses matching that value is displayed. This is a great way to know the values you can enter if you're using a new filter field. After hitting enter, all those flows for the displayed time period will be shown. If this is the data I'm looking for, I can click on download PCAP and the IOTA will save the filtered traffic to my computer. You'll find that the IOTA and the Prophesite application provide a powerful means to capture network traffic at full line rate and filter down on that traffic. 
This video is intended to get you started with the IOTA. The more you use it, the better you'll get at filtering down on those problem packets and getting them downloaded onto your computer. Be sure to check out the other ProfitApp videos on troubleshooting your network. For questions and support, please visit www.profitapp.com.